When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers! Pizza! Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require reporting of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams at up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Nonprofit U, a forum where nonprofit stakeholders can share lessons learned and discuss the latest developments in the industry. My name is Valerie Leonard, your host. I'm a consultant to nonprofits, and I specialize in community and organizational development. I work with nonprofit organizations to help them make a stronger impact to their clients and communities. You can find Nonprofit U on Facebook and on Twitter. I encourage you to follow us and to comment early and often using the hashtags Nonprofit U or Sustainability Meets Social Justice. You can also leave comments on blogtalkradio.com forward slash nonprofit underscore you. The chat room is open, and you can post comments and questions. In order to use the chat room, you must open a listener-only account, and you can find a link to open the account on the bottom of the page of this episode. You can also email me questions at consulting at valerieflorent.com. We'll be taking questions by phone and from our chat room at about the 20-minute mark or so. The call-in number is 347-884-8121. Again, that number is area code 347-884-8121. Today's topic is where sustainability meets social justice. We'll talk about the work Blacks and Green has done to create a five-year Green Village building proof of concept in a tip in Chicago's West Woodlawn community. We'll also talk about their role in negotiations surrounding the new Obama Presidential Library that will be coming to the south side of Chicago. And then we will also discuss the eight principles of Green Village Building. Again, we encourage you to call in with questions at about the 20-minute mark. You can start posting in the chat room and emailing questions now. Again, my email address is consulting at ValerieFLeonard.com. If you want to participate in a live chat, you must open an account, and the link is found on the episode page in the comments section. The call the number again is 347-884-8121. We're looking for nonprofit and community development professionals, as well as those who live in TIF districts to call in and share some of your stories and strategies. Today's guest is Naomi Davis. She is the president and founder of Blacks and Green. Naomi is an urban theorist, attorney, activist, and proud granddaughter of Mississippi sharecroppers. She serves as a bridge and catalyst among communities and their stakeholders in the design and development of green self-sustaining, mixed-income, walkable villages within black neighborhoods. Naomi is the author of The Eight Principles of Green Village Building, which is a whole system solution for the whole system problems common to black communities everywhere. She presents these in lectures and workshops around the country, and she also teaches at the University of Chicago Center for the Study of Race, politics, and culture. Together with the precursor Grannynomics, Green Village Building addresses the principle, I'm sorry, the terrible triplet of pollution, poverty, and plutocracy. So the three Ps, and this has got nothing to do with marketing, folks. Three Ps, pollution, poverty, and plutocracy. So thank you so much for joining us today, Naomi. And before we get started, can you give us a little bit of history of Blacks and Green, how you got started in your work around sustainability? And when I talk about sustainability in this context, I'm talking about environmental sustainability and environmental justice. 
Greetings, greetings, Aja. It's always lovely to be with you, Valerie. You know, I'm a big fan of the work that you do, and thanks for having me on today. I um, I just wanted to start by saying uh, the work that I did in teaching the eight principles of green village building at the University of Chicago for four semesters was back several years ago, and it was done uh, uh, through the Center for the Study of Race, Politics, and Culture as an open enrollment course for the community uh, conscious and curious and those uh, committed to moving forward as activists. And it Mm -hmm. formed, it evolved into our on-the-ground work here in our Green Village Building pilot of West Woodlawn, which is um, just a stone's throw away uh, from the center, and which uh, launched here uh, in 2011. We were founded in 07, uh, based uh, out of uh, just a unsubsiding despair that I had about the direction that my beloved African American communities were going in. I was raised, as it as it turns out, in many decades of hindsight, in a walkable village, in a self sustaining mm-hmm. African American uh, village where people could actually, as we say, walk to work, walk to shop, walk to learn, and walk to play. These mm-hmm. these attributes of place have in our lifetime, those of us of a certain age, um, uh, (laughs) absolutely gone extinct. And um, so it has become my my life's calling to uh, reinvent uh, those uh, walkable villages uh, for um, African Americans, as we say, mixed income, uh, walkable villages, uh, to reinvent those and to restore our place in the world. So one of your signature initiatives is Grannynomics, and that really serves as a foundation for much of the work that you're doing now. Can you share with us what Grannynomics is and how you've been able to impact the community through this initiative? I know you're involved in in many, but tell us about Grannynomics. Well, this one, yeah, this one is is really uh, at the core of of our heart work, our soul work, you you will mm-hmm. hear in um, and you shared in your introduction of me today uh, what I always keep um, front and center with people who I connect with is my my pride in my uh, great migration uh, roots. I am the proud granddaughter of Mississippi sharecroppers. Um, we are the uh, family of master farmers, grew every vegetable you can imagine, uh, maintained livestock across a uh, a pretty uh, standard, solid spectrum, horses, cows, where actually they weren't horses back in the day, they were uh, donkeys, (laughs) but uh, (laughs) pigs and uh, goats and uh, this kind of um, small farm, uh, which is so... Uh, sentimentally enshrined today is uh, uh, is the is the bedrock of where so many millions of us uh, came from uh, with our with our rooted traditions and and with it the wisdom uh, the love of the land the recognition of our human bodies as part of the whole uh, earth body of God's creation and. So uh, the 12 propositions of Grannynomics comes out of stories that my mother told me always, repeatedly, (laughs) forever, uh, (laughs) throughout my childhood, and which I inculcated into these um, sort of principles that um, allow us all to know that environmentalists, well, we are the first environmentalists. Uh, if you go back to the mother country and to the traditions of land stewardship there and here in America, um, you can give it a fancy name, you can give it a downtown office, but at the end of the day, um, African Americans are and have been deep practitioners of the conservation lifestyle, what we call the beautiful life, since forever we own it, we claim it, and we're bringing it forward. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So. You've been influenced by global events, and there's a trend toward interdependent local living economies as greenhouse gas reduction strategies, and you know that has really 
increased significantly since Obama has been president. And you have actually begun replicating some of these strategies by launching a five-year green village building proof of concept in a TIF in Chicago's West Woodlawn community. Can you give us a status report of this work and then a preview of what's to come? And, again, we, we really do thank you for, you know, really making such an impact, especially since 2008. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I I thank you, and and we uh, gratefully accept the acknowledgement. We are, uh, in spite of our name, we are tiny. Uh, we are a volunteer-run um, team, which is uh, just now making a major transition into a uh, a fully uh, staffed. Um, um, operating organization, and when I say staffed, I mean paid staff not the volunteer staff that we've been working with. God bless them. Um, nothing would have been possible without the dedication of many hundreds of um, astute and soulful um, interns, volunteers, and friends of Blacks and Green over the years. But we are um, raising funds. We're going to be raising funds. We're going to be hiring staff. Uh, please do check our Facebook, check our our, our blogs and our website for the folks that we're going to be hiring to move into this next era. Uh, we yeah, have awesome. been, um, yeah, we've been, uh, we have been um, programming around each of the eight principles of green village building um, because of uh, challenges with capacity. We're uh, never able to get all eight programs up and spinning at the same time. However, at any given time, we've got four um, uh, or more uh, principles activated in programs that are taking place on the ground um, and even around the city. Uh, so, for example, the West Woodlawn Botanic Garden and Village Farm Initiative, that was uh, launched in 2013 and has been a continuous programming element. Since then, we ask and explore the answers to four questions, which are, uh, how many households can we feed? How many neighbors Ooh. can we train and engage? How many jobs and businesses can we create? And how many gallons of stormwater can we divert? So we uh, at the West Woodlawn Botanic Garden and Village Farm Initiative are providing a framework through which um, our neighbors can be trained uh, for free at our, at our expense uh, to be stewards of the land and the place where they live. That means um, planting trees. That means um, caring for the community land trust that we are establishing. That's four season care, snow, leaves, grass, trash. That means um, looking at the backyard and front yard gardening capacities of neighbors, encouraging and organizing them. You know, when we launched in 2013, it was the year of the backyard garden, and we were <laughs> worshiping at the pulpit, uh, at the bully pulpit of our beloved First Lady, uh, Michelle Obama, who has written <laughs> one of the great books for, uh, for gardening uh, at the community level called American Grown. It's been our Bible. Uh, children love it. Old folks love it. And all of us in between love it. It's got samples of four season gardens to be planted and um, the ways that that ties into our history as a culture of African Americans, mm -hmm. as well as our history as a country through the Victory Garden and the World War II oh, awesome. um, upsurgence of the, of, the, of the backyard garden as a norm in our society to which we will need to return. So that's one of the programs um, in, uh, in, in the year coming up, we're going to be, we're so excited to be introducing a community solar program in which we will be um, uh, doing outreach and education. We will be uh, engaging and enrolling our neighbors to uh, subscribe to community solar renewable energy programs. We're going to be workforce training and placement. All you young men and women, middle and upper age men and women as well, come <laughs> and contact Blacks and Greens, 
six seven eight nine five four one if you want more information about our community solar training program uh, as well as we're going to be um, um, designing installing uh, and maintaining uh, in, uh, assembling these uh, photovoltaic um, installations uh, within our pilot community of Westwood Lawn and we say hey everybody Westwood Lawn is Chicago's first black middle class neighborhood. We are calling our children home. We want you to move back to our great migration legacy communities and inner cities mm -hmm. here in Chicago, just in the same way that the west sides of Chicago has uh, a deep and profound legacy in uh, African American settlement. We want to highlight the asset of the place where we are here in West Woodlawn and say, move back in, move back in now. If you can't afford to buy now, come and rent now, Blacks and Green, in addition to these other programs uh, I've been discussing, is entering into our first realm of real estate development. We um, own a lot. We're going to be building on that lot, and we're going to be acquiring other lots and building for the moderate income family. Come on back. If you don't come back, you know what's <laughs> going to happen. Others will fill up our great migration legacy communities. We will be priced out of our market, and we'll be living in a trailer down by the river somewhere. Now, <laughs> down by the river is pretty nice sometimes, i got to admit. But let's not lose our inner city um, traditional communities by default. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, first of all, blacks and greens or BIG, you're going to be part of the upcoming 2017 nonprofit building boom. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> right, and, <laughs> right, right. And, and then also the, the fact that you, know, you are um, you're taking your relationship with, I, I guess, the First Lady and the President, which has extended you know, way beyond they, before they were the First Lady and, and President, and you have – become part of this network of organizations that is working to bring about community benefits to the South Side as it relates to the Obama Presidential Library. The, yes. Can you tell us about that, about that work that you're doing? Yes, I am part of uh, two coalitions, actually. The Bronzeville Regional Collective, which was the um, – the first and uh, only, we believe, um, organization to respond to the Obama Foundation RFP with a request that uh, a community benefits process be established. In mm -hmm. our request, we established certain values and virtues that we felt were important to inculcate in any uh, work that was done going forward in conversations with the community. Um, um, principles that revolved around uh, preserving our heritage and culture, that um, preserved affordability for current residents, and especially our seniors, whom we love to see aging gracefully in place, um, market protections uh, that would be created in policies that specifically um, kept our taxes low, uh, which specifically supported the Community Land Trust, which mm -hmm. beyond um, jobs and, um, and, and, and low-income housing, which we consider to be extremely important and fundamental to any um, development initiative that, uh, that is being triggered at the scale uh, that is being triggered in Woodlawn right now, beyond those, Nothing, we believe, nothing, nothing, nothing trumps ownership of the land. And so we, we are um, vigilant, proactive, being creative, and very happy to be working um, with, um, with uh, any spectrum of partners who share our commitment to building community wealth, building community wealth. That is the litmus test. Look, if you're doing economic development and household income in your target area is not increasing. What are you doing? Where is the economic development happening? Who is profiting? 
We are definitely children of Richard Milhouse Nixon. We want to follow the money. We want to see where it's coming from. We want to see where it's going. And we want to ensure that, um, there, that not only is there parity, parity in the um, investment of public and private dollars in this city, but also where you have systemic structural racist practices that have ongoingly for, if you look back a hundred years, uh, we're celebrating the great migration this year. If you look back a hundred years, you could track the, uh, the thread of uh, discrimination uh, at every level, whether, it, whether it's in uh, housing or it's in transportation or if it's in finance or if it's in education or if it's in the media. You can track it and you can, um, and you can document the, uh, the traumatic effects which go down as far as the DNA level as well as the economic impacts which have caused an extreme racial wealth disparity in America. And so we're saying beyond parity, we need priority. We deserve it. We've been wronged. Mm -hmm. There are practical ways that we can be, that our interests can be prioritized. They should be. No one's going to concede this to us without a struggle. We don't think. We're willing to sit back and enjoy (laughs) uh, life on a silver platter if God's got it like that for us. But we're also willing to work hard for it, work, um, you know, work uh, with, our, with our heart and soul and our shoulder to the plow. We uh, are a self-helping kind of people. Yes, yes, yes. I, I love it. I want to remind our listening audience that you're listening to Nonprofit You, and we're speaking with Naomi Denise Davis. She's the founder of Blacks and Green, and we'll now take questions from you. Our call-in number is 347-884-8121. Again, that number is 347-884-8121. And, again, you're listening to Dynamo, Dynamic, Naomi Denise Davis. I I am just learning so much, and I, I thank you, thank you. And here's a question I always love to ask folks. What are some of the lessons that you've learned along the way the lessons that let you know that you are on the right track, but most of the things you will never, ever, ever forget. I'm sure you have a lot, a lot of problems <laughs> if you live in Chicago trying to do development in a black neighborhood. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And it, and it, really, um, it really boils down to a couple of core things, which is um, – you know, when in, in the environmental movement, so we, you know, Blacks and Green works at the intersection of the environment and the economy. And so mm-hmm. uh, what we understand, and it's a little bit wonky and not a lot of people are trying to hear it, but we, we are in the midst of a climate crisis. It is going to absolutely tear down the choices and uh, mitigate the lifestyle quality of life of, of the of grandchildren uh, that folks will uh, – will uh, be, be loving down the line. We, uh, we recognize that there are disruptions that are planned. Back when BIG was founded in 2007, we were at 370 parts per million greenhouse gases, and that was putting us um, well over uh, the 350 parts per million that uh, scientists from around the world um, considered uh, healthy. And everyone from kindergartners to to, to corporations around the globe decided, okay, by gosh, by gum, we're going to get our greenhouse gas levels down. And uh, here we are eight years later. Not only did we not go down with a bullet, we went in the other direction beyond what was classified then as the tipping point of 400 parts per million. Here we sit at 402 with a climate denier in the White House. And what folks don't know that uh, we've – you know, we've found that we uh, were right about was that we cannot wait on government to solve Mm -hmm. the problems associated with um, climate-based disruptions, which are coming. The sustainable square mile, the walkable village, the city of villages that Blacks and Green has been advocating for, 
um, dreaming, designing, and, and, and speaking about in lectures around the country is our own, we, we, we mentioned self-help a little while ago, is our uh-huh. own emergency management system proactively described. Emergency management professionals around the world will tell you the same thing, that when it comes to your salvation in a crisis such as, as triggered by extreme weather and those events are going to be coming around more and more with impacts to the insurance industry, to the food supply, to the quality of water, uh, all of these things are coming, but the very, very best key to your salvation is going to be what? It's going to be your relationship with your neighbors, your mm-hmm. relationship with your neighbors. Before you get that I closet full of water and canned meat, you better ring some doorbells and know who you live next to. That's at the core of Green Village Building. How can we uh, learn together, do fun things together, bring back the conservation lifestyle together, and within our walkable village, within our sustainable square mile, be able to be self-sustaining, to be resilient in the case of disruptions. What can we invent, invest, manufacture, and merchandise locally? How can we keep our waste loops closed locally? How can we produce our own, gener- generate our own energy locally? How can we create our cooperative lending systems locally? How can we celebrate our culture? Can we learn to fix an engine, birth a baby, um, sew, um, you know, not to just to mention grow our own food? These are uh, all programmatic elements of the eight principles of Green Village Building, which we have um, learned uh, we were right about. And um, mm-hmm and consequently uh, write about um, not, not depending on our elected officials to bring the heat and the light as our champions uh, <laughs> because um, I don't perceive that help is on the way. Right. We are our own Superman. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay, and with that, you know, we've come to the end of our show, and I'd like to thank you again, Naomi, for being my guest today. Is there anything you want to share with us before you go? And most importantly, if nothing else, how we can reach you? Yes, please email uh, me at Naomi Davis, N-A-O-M-I, D-A-V-I-S, at blacksingreen.org. That's blacks the color, plural, B-L-A-C-K-S, I-N-G-R-E-E-N dot org, or at 773-678-9541. And the last thing I want to say is just a real shout out. In one instance, our legislature, legislators across uh, both sides of the aisle worked very closely with some of us in the uh, environmental um, energy community for the last two years to produce the future energy legislation. We want to thank our partners at ComEd for working closely with us to produce an outstanding bill that is going to bring millions of dollars, jobs to the African-American community. And you heard it here. I'm never someone to talk about jobs coming to the African-American community because for the most part, it's a ruse. And if you hold my feet to the fire, I'm going to hold their feet to the fire, and we're (laughs) going to make sure economic development happens for real, real time. Uh, Be in touch. Community Solar in Westwood Lawn. Awesome, awesome. I want to thank everyone for listening to Nonprofit U Blog Radio Talk Show. The talk show will be available for download within about an hour, and really thank you so much, Naomi. This is awesome stuff. And I invite everyone to tune in next week for another lively discussion. We will have Mark Lane. Mark is the vice chairman of the Cook County Commission on Social Innovation. So, again, Naomi, I thank you. I'm I'm deeply honored. Cut our heads open. Love you um, so much. (laughs) So I will talk to you next week and talk to everyone else next week. Take care. Bye-bye.
Get to Old Navy two days only, today and tomorrow. Wrap up Old Navy's PJ pants for adults for just five bucks. That's right, five bucks. Don't sleep on it. It ends tomorrow at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. Valid 1215 to 1216, select styles only. Wow, nice haul. Told ya. Macy's Backstage has perfect last-minute gifts. With prices so low, you never need a coupon. I scored the perfect makeup palette. Super cute. I grabbed these cool drones for the guy. Nice. Here's a handbag for Aunt Helen. Found awesome toys for the kids. Cookware for the budding chef. Oh, and look what I got for Uncle Hank. A puppy chew toy? No, no, that's for Rex. They even have gifts for pets. Well, you know Uncle Hank. He'd love anything <laughs> we gave him. Macy's Backstage. Savings for everyday life. Details at Macy'sBackstage.com.